I'd like to leave the final word on statins to their discoverer, Akira Endo. In 2004, he was found to have an elevated LDL level and his doctor, not knowing who he was, <laughs> recommended that he take a statin. Akira declined. <laughs> now, when questioned by journalist Peter Landers as to why, he replied cryptically with a Japanese proverb. The indigo dyer wears white trousers. <laughs> a proverb which tacitly acknowledges the toxic and corrosive impact of the chemicals used in the indigo dyeing process, which historically has included formaldehyde and cyanide. Only he can know whether he believes statins to be as dangerous. I honestly don't believe that doctors do recognize statin side effects, even when they're sitting right in front of them. Statins have become one of the most widely prescribed categories of drugs in medical history. And so we know a lot about them. Dr. Peter Langsjern has been practicing cardiology since 1985. We asked Dr. Langsjern to explain how statins work and how statins affect coenzyme Q10 levels within the human body. They are a drug that blocks a biochemical pathway in all cells, very high up in the pathway. It blocks the production of a compound called mevalonate. That's the precursor for many other compounds. When you block this pathway, you block the ability of cells to biosynthesize cholesterol. Well, there's many branches on this pathway. Think of it as a tree, and you're cutting it off at the trunk. All the branches will be affected. Not only do you lower cholesterol, you lower other compounds. One of those that we know a lot about is this coenzyme Q. So if you take a statin and you decrease cholesterol levels, let's say by 40 or even 50 percent, which they're capable of doing, you're going to have a 40 or 50 percent reduction in CoQ10. It's not, it's not avoidable. It's the same pathway. So cells that are active 24 hours a day, every day, very active, and that would be heart muscle cells, they don't rest day or night. Uh, they use a huge amount of energy, and therefore heart muscle has the highest concentration of CoQ10, by far. We have the unfortunate effect, therefore, that by giving a statin to try and reduce cholesterol, we may well be blocking one of the most important molecules in the function of heart muscle. So in effect, while statins may be acting, they think, in a good way, we've got very ample evidence that by blocking CoQ10, we're probably raising the risk of heart muscle failure and therefore heart attacks from a different avenue other than arterial blockage. Most drugs, if they're going to affect you adversely, you can tell it within a day. You swallow the pill and 30 minutes later you throw up or have diarrhea or have a rash and then you know not to take it again. Statins are insidious because their side effects began very gradually over a period of months to years. 그리고 반드시 복용을 유지해야 하는 경우에는 코엔자임 Q10, 비타민 D3K2, 토코트리에놀, 셀레늄을 같이 복용해야 합니다. 이 중에 코엔자임 Q10은 반드시 드셔야 합니다. 스타틴은 체내에서 코엔자임 Q10을 고갈시키기 때문입니다. The idea is that drugs are not good. They mess up the biochemistry of the body. And even if you mask symptoms or you reduce risks, at the end of the day, the body's got to eliminate the drug. The drug is, is, considered, to be the, is considered by the body to be verboten, forbidden. It has mm. to be eliminated. Mm. And not only that, but you expend nutritional resources, your vitamin C, your B complex, your magnesium, your copper, your manganese, your zinc, your body has to utilize these nutrients in order to detoxify the drug. So now you run higher risks of uh, uh, diseases or illnesses that are associated with nutritional deficiencies. You run higher risks of zinc deficiency issues and magnesium deficiency right, right. issues. Because now your body's using these nutrients to get rid of the drugs. And many of these drugs, ironic, or many of these nutrients, ironically, mm. are used by the body to protect the heart. So you lose your magnesium, 
because your body's yeah. trying to eliminate the uh, the statin drug, and magnesium is one of the most cardioprotective supplements there mm -hmm. are. Coenzyme Q10 is made in the same biochemical processes that make cholesterol. So when you take your statin drugs, you're depriving your body of coenzyme Q10, which is one of the heart's most protective nutrients. We know statin drugs are associated with diabetes. Mm. Uh, in fact, it's so it, the link is so significant that the FDA mandates a little black box warning is put on the on the bottle and on the package insert of statin drugs that the mm. pharmacists get mm. that says, warn your patients they may get diabetes, diabetes being another risk factor for heart disease. So you take you take your statin drugs yeah. to reduce cardiovascular issues and you end up with diabetes which causes, which causes cardiovascular, cardiovascular issues. issues. <웃음> <웃음> 여러분, 당뇨가 얼마나 위험한 병인지 잘 아시죠? 당뇨 환자는 치매 발생 위험이 두세 배 높아진다는 사실을 아십니까? 이번에는 미국 50세에서 79세 여성 15만 명 연구입니다. 스타틴 복용과 제2형 당뇨 발생 위험을 조사했는데요. 스타틴 복용군에서는 약 10% 당뇨가 발생했고 비복용군에서는 6.4% 발생했습니다. 즉 스타틴 복용 3년간 당뇨 발생 위험은 약 71% 증가했다는 뜻입니다. 인종별로 보면 히스패닉에서 64% 증가했지만 우리나라 같은 아시아 그룹에서는 무려 112%나 증가했습니다. 특히 아시아인에서 아토바스타틴을 투여한 경우에는 당뇨 발생 위험도가 더 증가했기 때문에 사용에 주의할 필요가 있겠습니다. 여러분께서는 아직도 스타틴이 여러분들을 구원할 거라고 생각하십니까? 저는 어떤 의미의 구원인지 전혀 감도 잡히지 않습니다. 이번에는 영국인 200만 명 조사로 역시 스타틴 복용과 당뇨 위험입니다. 데이터를 보면 스타틴 사용 1년 미만인 경우에는 당뇨 발생 위험이 52% 증가했지만 3년에서 5년인 경우에는 73%로 더 증가했습니다. 조금 전 여성 연구에서 3년간 71% 증가했다고 말씀드렸죠. 상당히 비슷한 결과입니다. 그런데 10년에서 15년인 경우에는 305%로 크게 증가했고 15년 이상인 경우에는 무려 363%나 증가했습니다. 정말 엄청나지 않습니까? 이건 누적 효과가 예상되는 연구 결과입니다. 의학 기사를 보면 스타틴 사용 시 당뇨병이 증가하는 이유는 스타틴이 인슐린 저항성을 증가시키고 췌장의 베타세포 기능을 떨어뜨려서 인슐린 분비 자체를 줄이기 때문이라고 추정되고 있습니다. 심혈관 질환자나 치매 환자나 인슐린 저항성이 크게 증가되어 있는데 이 경우에 스타틴을 사용하면 인슐린 저항성이 더 증가한다는 의미입니다. 스타틴을 장기간 복용하면 당뇨 발생 위험이 크게 증가하는데 당뇨가 발생하면 치매 발생 위험 역시 두세 배 증가한다고 말씀드렸죠. 스타틴 자체로도 인지 기능을 떨어뜨릴 수 있지만 스타틴 부작용으로 당뇨가 발생해도 치매 발생 위험이 높아진다는 뜻입니다. When people talk about trying to end heart attacks uh, in the world or in America at least, one of the ways to do that is to take a look inside the heart, see what's happening. before someone ever, ever has a problem. And that's what we're going to do here today. You're actually going to look for what in my heart? Yes, for calcium, which is part of the atherosclerotic process, the plaques in the heart. Studies have consistently shown that cholesterol-lowering statins actually increase the amount of calcified plaque in the arteries. Ironic for a drug that's supposed to prevent heart disease. The Veterans Affairs Diabetes Trial found that more frequent statin use was associated with accelerated coronary artery calcification. Another study published in the journal Atherosclerosis found that statins also increased the amount of calcified plaque in healthy people without diabetes. And yet another study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found similar results. These studies have been quietly ignored by the medical establishment and the mainstream media. And the cholesterol converts vitamin K1 to K2, the prenyl intermediates, and they activate an enzyme that prevents calcium deposition in the blood vessels of the heart. So this is a VA study, and the VA study was done in patients who were on statins not using frequently versus those who were using frequently. When you see the people who were using statins a lot, they had more calcification. When they were followed at 4.3 years, the progression of calcium was highest in the people using statins compared to the people who were not. This is another compelling information. You take smooth muscle cells. These are cells that line the wall of the vessel, and you grow them in a culture dish, and you give them increasing amounts of the uh, statin drug. And what you're finding on the slide to the left of the screen here 
is that as the dose of statin increased, more cells were dying. Now, a picture is worth a thousand words, and in this picture, the arrows are pointing to the effects of statins that are killing the smooth muscle cells. 의사가 필요에 따라 스타틴을 처방하는 경우에는 환자에게 미리 알려줘야 합니다. 약물 복용 중에 기억력이 떨어지거나 우울 증상을 보이면 반드시 주치의에게 알리도록 말입니다. 미리 알리지 못했다고 하더라도 주치의는 인지 저하가 혹시 발생하지는 않는지 우울 증상이 보이지는 않는지 확인해야 합니다. 약물에 의한 인지 저하 증상이 명백히 보이는 환자에게도 이 증상을 나이 탓을 돌리거나 쓸데없는 걱정이라고 화를 내거나 약물과 전혀 관계없는 치매 증상이니까 신경외과 진료를 보라고 하는 것은 매우 잘못된 의료행위입니다. 손바닥으로 하늘을 가릴 수는 없습니다. 정말 이런 증상을 보려고나 했습니까? 이런 증상이 나타난 환자에서 약을 중단해 본 적이라도 있습니까? 죄송하지만 그런 의사 저는 아직까지 한 번도 못 봤습니다. 하지만 저는 많은 환자들이 인지장애가 개선되고 발음장애, 어지럼증, 무기력감이 개선되고 검사에서 드러나지 않는 근육통이 개선되는 모습을 지난 10년 동안 무수히 경험해 왔습니다. 만약 제가 인지하지 못했다면 이분들은 과연 어떻게 됐을까요? 평생 치매 환자로 살다가 무기력하게 비극적으로 인생을 마감하지 않았을까요? 의심조차 하지 않고 약물 중단도 해본 경험이 없는 사람들이 어떻게 약물의 부작용이 없다고 당당하게 말할 수 있습니까? 이제 이런 오만함에서 벗어나야 합니다. 여러분의 잘못된 선택이 환자를 비극적인 인생으로 몰아갈 수 있다는 사실을 반드시 기억하길 바랍니다. LDL 6편에서 다시 뵙겠습니다. 그러면 닥터3는 다음에도 더 나은 영상으로 찾아뵙겠습니다. 제 영상이 마음에 드셨다면 좋아요, 구독 꼭 눌러주십시오. 닥터3는 여러분의 건강을 응원합니다.